of bill of material. But to help us generate the bill of material, we have an interesting tool called the ePlan Data Portal. The ePlan Data Portal, you can actually preview all the parts here. We have over 400,000 parts now, but more to come. Uh, of course, these parts uh, can be used, dragged and dropped into ePlan. But let's take a look first at how we create a bill of material to start with in ePlan. So when you create a project from scratch like this, it actually comes with eventually some pages. I'm going to go and draw inside this page some uh, schematic. And here we have a bunch of symbols that were placed and numbered. And of course, if I want to add some more, you know how to do this, insert symbol, an FPA protection device, fine, I want this, I want to place it. Here we go, it numbers automatically. And now I have a device that is ready to get a part number assigned. I can pick a part number just like this here out of the selection and go down and drill it down and say, okay, I want to go check out some Siemens, um, motor circuits, no miniature circuit breakers, this is fine, this looks good, one pole, two amp, I take this one, okay, take this one, there we go, we have all the information, the parts data that gets saved, I could even additionally add some parts reference data. This is more like special details like procurement, stress, service time that you would assign to this part number with this circuit breaker. But technically we are looking at the parts data to be transferred into the bill of material. At this point, I'm already ready to do a bill of material. I can generate here and I can check out in my templates. I already previously went with this new button and picked the summarize parts list. So I can simply pick that summarize parts list, generate the uh, report, and there we go, I get a summarize parts list. Right now, I only have two parts assigned. So if I return to my uh, original page and I go to, uh, let's just finish this up very quickly in the drawings, this here, this we have a T node, the T node is a daisy chain, there we go, and it's complete. Okay, now it look, looks better. Let's go one up. Let's take a look at this one. This one has no part number assigned. I'm going to use the device selection. Device selection will actually look at the functions that have been used and will look for possible uh, items that actually would do the job. So here, this Siemens is a circuit breaker. So it's actually part of the selection up there. And there, as soon as I hit the apply button, I get all the data. This data, of course, was picked from here. And based on the function template, knowing that this is a circuit breaker, we had chosen a circuit breaker, this will populate right there. So I can do this X number of times. I can also work with what we call here the build material navigator, which basically can be set with the settings to show and display devices without part numbers. This is an interesting way to work because you can actually go here to some circuit breakers. This is one double click on a guy, do a device selection, select any device you want, uh, Al Bradley, there we go, boom, part is assigned, and it disappears from the top one and it just goes down. Technically speaking, you can do this for every single device. You can also do a device selection with the right mouse click. This will actually pick the device selection right away out of the box, so it's done. And you can fill out your parts assignment like this. There's another trick. If we are in the schematics and we want to insert a device straight out of this here, we could. We could actually pick this motor here and the motor comes up right away with the right symbol. I can just basically rotate this and place it in the position I want, right? Like this, that's very easy. Then I can actually go and say, I want to insert a motor overload. I can pick here out of the selection motor overload, protection devices, I go down, I find one, ABB, Allen Bradley, Siemens, whichever you actually want, right? And when it actually pops up, you can basically just rotate it, align it nice and straight with your motor, and there you got your schematics. Your build material right now will be completed with all these parts. Another thing you can do is you can actually check out on the data portal, see if the part that you're looking for may actually be there. For instance, if you happen to know that the Alm Bradley has part numbers like Alm Bradley 20A for something like a PowerFlex. Here you can see we have a few different PowerFlex. 
I'm going to pick a smaller one. This one here, maybe a 43, a 30 amp power flex. I'm going to take this one, insert it, and it will actually come in. The issue is though, this one was planned in for IC. No big deal. I'm just taking it, okay, I place it, and I will be rotating it. Interesting feature for black boxes, we can rotate the feature, uh, the, the black box, and we can also mirror the black box. This will actually make it ready to be used right in this environment here. So I can take this block, just have it right nice and straight in here. It cuts the wires apart. All you need to do is basically here for the last one, hook up your um, ground if you want to bring it back, you can stretch this, anything is possible. Now, the part number that is related here also got saved. Other information also comes sometimes with the parts. We name here some image files, okay? Sometimes they have some image files that can actually be related to it. Or what they sometimes do, let me just go back, I'll uh, pick an, um, another one that we have on the uh, previous page here. Let's take a look. We have sometimes some hyperlinks. These hyperlinks can be external documents. These external documents can actually get you straight to the website uh, from Rockwell to find that specific part. And some other times they actually go even further and they give you uh, some um, graphics, PDFs. Uh, in this particular case here, we're looking at a, a spec sheet, right, that was attached from their, their website. It's quite interesting. So. At the end of the day, your build material is simply a list that gets updated automatically. And now if you want that list into a uh, labeling format, basically in a file format, this is where you do it. You basically specify here under the file, the file format, the name of the file, uh, what app appears in the different columns here. And there you go, you apply to the entire project, and this will actually generate the same bill of material, but this time in Excel. Here you go, you have a bill of material in Excel.